sprints out there. I pull you down faster than goose shit through tin horn. But what about them 4,600 voters out here? The office holder's got to make ends meet just like everybody else. So naturally, he's got to turn to his friends. Well, naturally. But the public don't understand how politics works. No better than pigs understands kissing. <coughs> nah, Mona, if loose talk gets started, you and me could both end up with our tails in a crack. Would you come over here and sit down? Hell, all right. Now you have got to learn how to relax. Now I know just what you ought to do. Why don't you go unlock all that bootleg whiskey you confiscate, see? And then you can call out all the old church ditties and their fruit hats and let them stand around clapping and singing for Jesus while you come in with a great big old sledgehammer and break it all up. It's always worked before. Get folks to come out to a whiskey breaking no more. Not a growing swell on. <laughs> Shit, I ain't caught me a peeping Tom in Landell County in what, 22 years? Because they're all at home watching that crazy ass television. Hey, Earl. How are folks in town taking all this? Uh, okay, for now. Well, they just point out how you always sponsor the mechanism patching out for the high school, and how you bought all the little leaguers their uniforms, they didn't play ball in their overalls. Somebody mentioned that I pay double taxes on this place as Miss Mona's boarding house. Yeah, but you let that television idiot go running off in the mouth and folks will start crusading. Teachers will start getting people riled up, and I'll get the school teachers and the JCs, and not to spend so much time stomping out grass fires, I might as well sell my hunting dogs. And don't you forget, Ed Earl, that one half of the police officers and two thirds of the lawyers in the state of Texas grew up right in this house. <laughs> Time. I don't know why people watch that piece of shit television show anyhow. Hell, yeah, they ain't nothing on it but a bunch of meddlers and priors and a bunch of football boys jitterbugging in the end zones. You remember, you remember how nice and peaceful things used to be out there, Mona? That was when you were still a working girl out there for Miss Bubba Jean. Back then, when one of them pissant nickel newspaper editors caught it in his crotch crusade, I could always stop him just by threatening him. But damn it. Threaten a Mike Wallace or Walter Cronkite. They'll be in this thing next, you know. Don't you worry, man. Sheriff, Sheriff, you better make tracks. The mayor called and he is fit to be tied. There is some TV man down at the courthouse that's looking for you. Damn it, TV man? Uh, hey, y'all. Uh, I bet you it's that Melvin P. Thorpe bastard. I better get on down to the courthouse. Well, now that must be one sorry reporter looking for you down at the courthouse. Mona, you know, this kiss ass job just ain't no fun no more. <laughs> Hell, there was a time when law and order meant something around here, but now you gotta read folks their rights to them till you go half blind and fill out a stack of damn papers that a shit-eating show dog couldn't jump over. Yeah. No, no, I've got myself half a mind to get this job back to them. <laughs> you know, there's some say you got too rich for the job. Oh, damn it, well, that ain't funny. All I've got is my pension and my good name. And your Cadillac and your cattle ranch. Oh, and that fishing lodge down at Padre Island. <laughs> Well, I'm going to drive you crazy. Bye-bye, Ed Earl. I'm showing you charm now. <laughs>
I believe the only traffic in this town is what's headed for the chicken ranch. Right, Sheriff? <laughs> Flashy little fruit. Up until now, you've got two tickets. One for parade without a license and the other for insulting me. Now, I said move it on out of here. Get off the street. Right. You go on home, watch some television. I'm afraid I am perfectly within the law, Sheriff Dodd. As a newsman, I have first aid and it right. Besides, I believe the public would love to know why you're protecting a house of ill repute and what kind of payoffs you may be accepting. <laughs> first thing, first thing is you're standing in Landville County, which to my figuring is about 100 miles west of that shithole you call Houston. And I can't see it's a whole heck of a lot of business of yours what goes on here. Now, number two. Number two is, you ain't an officer of the law, and I am. And this is my damn pea patch you're standing in, so don't go trying to tell me what my damn job is, or I'll take those dime store cap guns off of you, and I'll whoop your butt so bad it'll look like I stripes on a bubble ball. <laughs> number three. Number three is, no sawed off little shit is going to accuse me of taking a bribe and live to tell about it. Because I wear the badge in this damn county, and if I get any matter, I'm gonna blow your ass all the way back to Harris County, and you can go see the damn Civil Liberties Union in tiny little pieces. If I ever see any one of you sorry little shitheads in this town again, I'm gonna lock up your ass until your baby's grown. And if I ever dream that any one of you bastards even thought about driving through this town, I'll hunt you down like a hound dog with a possum. <laughs> Damn it, fellas, I didn't know that little shit-ass 
guys had the machines to run it? Well, you sure fixed our wagon head, Earl. I mean, all we want to do was keep it quiet about the chicken ranch. And now, it's the hardest thing on air since the gong show. Oh, they're going to run it again on the awesome six o'clock news. Yeah. Chef, now you can set up your little sneaky speed traps and nab those tubs. And you can look the other way when the wrong kid swipes the car to go joyriding. Hell, you can even let Miss Mona do her, her business out there, but there's one thing you can't get away with, you know, and that's broadcasting good to talk on the TV. I didn't know it was taking pictures. Well, what did you figure the camera was for? I'm getting just a little bit sick and tired of all this bad mouthing. Hell, the chicken ranch don't give me near as much trouble as that, old, that motor skate rink or those all night stack bodies out of the Legion Ass Hall. Come on, Sheriff. Yeah, Thank you want to give that speech on the TV right there, Sheriff. Uh, now, the Jesus bug says she chases off industry that might locate him. Horse crap. She's the biggest industry in this county, her own self. Oh, yeah, and the, the chicken ranch don't pollute the air or the water, right? Ansel, if you were to show a little guts of your own, you'd stand up for this town in your newspaper. Instead of writing all that sissy crap about glee clubs, men in ribbons, and little old ladies having ice cream socials in the backyards. Hell, that sawed off little fart and let out no big secret, you know. <laughs> Miss Bonin herself ain't all that upset about it. I was out there this morning and they was getting all fixed up for the Thanksgiving party, just like always. Oh, no, no, Chef. I mean, you, you can't let that television crusader get wind of all football boys being out there. I mean, I may have to move to Bangkok or somewhere else. Well, I'll tell you boys this much. If that little three foot of excuse of a man comes around here again, I'm gonna flatten him so far he'll have to roll down his socks to shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, hell, I better get on back to the office so everybody can call me up and tell me we got a whorehouse operating here. For about 150 years. <laughs> I'm not at all persuaded I don't want to be in Miss Mona's shoes right now. Well, at least she ain't on her feet all day. I trade places with her. I don't think I'll wait until you do. Fredericks of Hollywood got these clothes, movie magazine. You send in money, you take your pick, you end up like a Playboy queen. I want it to.
Let me hear it. 